What would you um, like to talk about? Was... Uh, do you know anything about NTFs? Um, yes, NFTs, non non yeah. oh, non fungible tokens. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yeah. So, uh, what would you like to know? I I, <clears throat> I just learned. Oh, not learned. I just heard about it today. Mm. Um, so, is is this digital art or what is it? Basically, yeah. Yeah, like um, say every every second house that you went into in the 1970s had a picture of the Mona Lisa on the wall, right? Which was just a, yeah. a screen print copy. Um, but there's only one Mona Lisa, and mm -hmm. you know there's the, the the screen prints on the wall are worth five bucks, but the actual original thing is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, same with pictures of Van Gogh and that sort of stuff. So what what they're doing is creating a work of art. And it can be like a, a picture, um, it can be a work of music, it can be whatever, um, and then putting it on the blockchain saying, this is the original one. Other people can make copies sure. of it. Um, like when, when we were kids, like you'd hear a song on the radio and you'd tape it off the radio, but your song never sounded as good and you didn't own it. <laughs> um, so the, it, can, it can be a lot of different things, but it's, it's basically saying this is the only one, the official one in existence. Um, and you can own it because a lot of a lot of people obviously have made money out of stocks and shares and, and properties and cryptocurrencies and that sort of stuff. Um, but meanwhile, mm. someone who bought the Van Gogh, you know, 20, 30 years ago for $1 million, now they can sell it for $20 million, for example. So true, true, true. Pe people hang on to these, these non-fungible tokens and say, oh, I've got the only one in existence. And that, that's what gives it value. So as, as distinct from crypto, like the value in, in crypto to me is not just I can buy it and I can hold on to it, but I can actually pay you. You know, I can send you $30 worth of Ripple or I can send you know, your friend $50 worth of Bitcoin. So for me, cryptocurrency is just money that I can email to someone very quickly and easily. Like I, I can literally send Muliani $100 in Bali. And if I do it through, say, Western Union or bank transfer, it's going to cost 20, 30 bucks. But if I do it through Bitcoin, it's going to cost about 16 cents. So that's where I see the value in cryptocurrency is, is the usability of it, whereas the non-fungible tokens is basically you buy it, you hang on to it, you might hang on to it for a month, you might hang on to it for a couple of years, and then eventually you sell it to someone else and they've got the only original work of art. So. Uh -huh, true, true, true. So, yeah, okay. Right. Uh, so can you... Can you just auction these out, for instance? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you, yeah, you, you can you can sell it off to anyone, but it's not something that you know. Once you've sold it, you can't buy it back. Whereas you know, oh, I, yeah, I, sure. I, I can send you a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, and I can go to direct to the exchange and buy another hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Mm. So you know, that's why you know, Bitcoin is called digital gold because an ounce of gold in Africa is the same as an ounce of gold in China or Russia or, or wherever. Um, but yeah. yeah, literally with a, with a Van Gogh, there's only one in the world. You can make a copy of it. Like someone's got a non-fungible token, which might be say, a, a picture of your face. I can take a screenshot of it. I can shoot a copy of my phone, but it's not worth anything. Whereas the original mm -hmm. is actually worth something. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you buy and you hold on to for a, for a period of time and hope that it's going mm. to come in value. Because I mean, there's, there's art collectors out there who... You know, 20, 30 years ago, they would have bought, say, 50 paintings. And one of them is now worth a million bucks, but the other ones aren't worth much at all. And that's just, mm, 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 you're, mm. you're either very, very clever or it's the luck of the draw. Oh, true. true, true, true. All right. It's, it's an, in, an in, interesting thing that they can put something on the blockchain and say, you know, this is the only one in the world and you can't make any copies of it. So mm. it's certainly an interesting use case. And, and people who are used to collecting traditional art. You know, the guys who have got Van Goghs on their wall, um, obviously they'll see the value in it. And if they want to buy your painting, then they'll pay a fortune for it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just an interesting use case. I, I, I don't have any myself. I don't know anybody who has any um, because I sort of prefer the financial side of, you know, buying, holding, investing and utilising. So... Yeah, true, true, true. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's it's an it's an yeah, interesting no, no, no. field. I'm sure you could you could get into it. 
Um, and there's, there's some people who have paid like, you know, two or three dollars for, for a picture. And then literally the next month they've sold it to someone else for a hundred thousand or a million. And I'm like, okay, that's what someone wanted to pay for it. Uh, you can put mm, anything up mm, to auction mm, and mm. see what someone will pay for it. But the person who's buying it. Yeah, that's right. The only one in the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I know a few people, uh, I know a few artists actually. So, you know, uh, I'm just thinking uh, if, uh, if they will be interested or if, or if uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you can create, you know, if I learn how to, you know, the ins and the outs, maybe I can create a course, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, I mean, if you, if you can help like them get on the blockchain, yeah. that's going to be a win-win for both of you. Mm. So. Um, so, all right. Um, so, let's talk about hodling. Yep. Um, so what, uh, how much, how much, how many percentage are you holding and how much are you trading with, uh, you know, if you compare the two? Me you, 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 yeah. Um, probably maybe, maybe 5% sitting in trading. Sure, 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 sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not not a, not a lot, obviously. I mean, you know, you can trade as much as much or as little as you want. Um, but at the end end of the day, like you know, you you could have bought Ripple three years ago for like two or three dollars a coin, and then it went down to like fifteen cents, and now I don't know what it is worth sixty cents or something like that. So if you are hanging on to it, then at least you've got something to hang on to. Like you might have put a hundred thousand dollars into it and watched it go down to say ten thousand dollars, but at least you've still got that ten thousand dollars worth of ripple. And when it starts going back up, then you're going to be okay. Um, whereas with trading, like if, if I put in a buy order, you know, when Bitcoin was seventy thousand and Bitcoin went down to fifty thousand, I've lost that money because I wasn't actually holding the Bitcoin. I was just I was just trading it. Um, and you know, usually if, if there's a movement of five or ten percent, your your bid disappears. So that's you know, that's why you, you put you put a bid on the table. And I've I've showed my my trading account a few times on on previous calls. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to, happy to show you again tonight if you want. Um, but I, I keep a few hundred dollars on there, and mm -hmm. you know when it when it builds up and say okay, I've, I've turned that three hundred dollars into a thousand, then I'll take five hundred dollars off the exchange. And I'll hold on to that, and then I'll keep playing. It, I, I guess it's kind of like um, you go into the casino, right? You put five hundred dollars on the table. They give you a whole bunch of little chips, and then you're playing with the chips and playing with the chips and playing with the chips. But if the chips build up into a big stack, you'll turn half of that stack into cash, put it in your bank, and then just keep playing with the chips. And obviously, if you're out of chips, then it's game over. But as long as you can keep stacking the chips up. And every now and then you're going to take some of that and, and put it into long term holding. So, mm, mm, mm. yeah, true, true, true. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what about yourself, buddy? Are you trading at all or are you just holding? Uh, I'm just holding at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, this year I want to really get into trading as well. So, Mm, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at uh, at yeah. the moment. And there's a lot of guys who say, oh, "I really want to get into trading, but I don't have time to sit in front of a computer all day," because you know they're working on a construction site, or they're driving an Uber, or they're doing whatever they're doing. Um, mm. And 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 literally, it's like five or ten minutes at breakfast time in the morning is when I check the charts and I'll place mm. a couple of trades. Like you know, Bitcoin might be trading at say sixty three thousand, and I think oh, it's a bit high. Um, if it drops down to 55, then I'll buy it. So I put a buy order in for 55. But if everybody's selling at 63, that buy order either won't get filled at all or it might not get filled for hours. So I'll just put it in there and I'll walk away. And, you know, if I'm lucky at lunchtime, I'll come back and check it and, oh, it's not filled yet. That's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. At dinner time, check it again. Maybe it's getting close down there. Maybe it filled, maybe it didn't. But it's literally like five or ten minutes in the morning and five or ten minutes before I go to bed. So you're certainly not sitting in front of the computer all day. 
Um, mm -hmm. As long as you just, you just pick where you want to buy and where you want to sell. And sometimes I say, you know, if, if the market's looking volatile, I'll say, if it drops down by 5%, I'll buy. And if it goes up by 7%, then I'll sell. So mm. there's, there's literally like a 2% change in the market. But if it drops down and then goes up, like on, on 10, times, 10 times leverage, I can make 70% on whatever I put in for that day. So that's, mm. that's where mm -hmm. I, I say things like, you know, if you want to make 100% in a year, then you buy and hold. If you want to make 100% in a day, then you learn how to trade. So let, let's say I put $100 on that trade, price goes down, price goes up, and it automatically buys when it gets down to there, automatically sells when it gets up to there, and I've turned mm. my 100 into 170. And that's okay on one trade, but you can do 5, 10, 20 trades. You know, and it, again, you set them all up in the morning. So when the market was going down, what I think two days ago, I've put a whole bunch of trades just sitting there and then just waited and just walked away. And I don't even think I looked mm. at it. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, I don't even, don't even think I looked at it on Monday. Um, mm. And then, you know, got up this morning and go, wow, my trades are filled. And so I've got five or six trades that are actually running at the moment and they're all in profit because I bought when it went down and they've mm. gone up. So I moved my stop loss up and now literally I can't lose. If the market disappeared, dropped down, I've still actually made that money. That's right, that's right. I mean, I guess that's the the goal or one of the, the first goals for you, I guess, or, or when you trade like you know like that, is to be able to move up, uh, move up the stop loss. Yeah. Uh, uh, above uh, break even there, uh, yeah. at least. So, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, you know that's that style of trading uh, really fits. You know, uh, me at the moment, you know, I'm very time poor, mm -hmm. but um, you know, so yeah, yeah, I really like it. I really like it. I do. Yeah, yeah. You, you've seen some of my trades that I've shown on the call previously. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so I, I do post a little bit in the in the Krillionaire group about that, and mm -hmm. there's also there's also some links in there. Like there's a, there's even a video that I put on YouTube showing you how I move the stop losses and things like that. I'm not sure if you've seen the video. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. and there's, there's a link yeah. inside of that video to the, um, the MBA Trading Academy, which is where I've, where I've been learning. Um, now, I've, I've been in there probably eight or nine months. I'm not sure. Uh, might, might be coming up on 12 months now. I, I, I really don't know. Sometime during the, the whole lockdown pandemic period when I, when I started learning, and um, I mean, I'm still learning, you know, I mean, I have some wins, I have some losses, hopefully the losses are bigger than the, um, sorry, the, the gains are bigger than the losses. Yeah, um, yeah. You, have, you have good days and bad days, because even as much as you can say, oh, last time it did this and last time it did this, then it did that. That's pretty good, but there's no guarantees. You know, I've, mm. I've literally been into the casino and seen the guy spinning the roulette wheel and it came up black four times in a row. And I'm like, I'm mm. going to bet on red because 50-50 chance, right? It shouldn't come up black. That's right. Time. And I bet 50 bucks on red and went bang, black again. And I'm like, damn, mm. that's mm. five five times in a row. Now I've got to bet another $50. And you go, oh, no. black again. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to walk away because I know that yes, odds mm. are going to be there. So put on $100 yeah. on red and go, okay, bang. I've, I've doubled mm. my money. I've actually paid myself back for the money I lost. Now I can walk away. <laughs> but yeah. there's, wow. there's almost certainty. Like, you know, you, you say like about 80% of the time when the market does this and does this, then it's going to do that. Mm. And mm. With, with my trades, me personally, I get it right six times out of 10, which means I, mm. I still fail 40% of the time, but I'm, I'm still in front. Now, there's, there's some traders like the guys who are teaching me, they're right like 92% of the time. But they've been doing it for years. And I think as long as I can, you know, every time I win $60, I lose $40, I'm still $20 in front. And so I can That's just right. do that 10 times a day on 10 different trades. Mm. And it's mm. a pretty good day, you know? Mm. And obviously, yeah, once no, you start that... building up your chips, you can put in more. You can put in $1,000 bets rather than $10 bets. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that... That's what I like. Uh, uh, 
like trading, you know, uh, you know, when you protect your downside mm, mm. and and uh, have big potential on the upside, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, I do understand that, you know, losses has to happen, but uh, uh, yeah, if, I mean, if you protect your downside or limit your downside, uh, you know, in the long run, uh, if you yeah, if you learn how to do it, should should be a, should be a good thing. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, last week I, I put on some trades and I, I put in my downside at 10%. Okay, if the market goes down 10%, I'm jumping out because I don't want to lose any more than 10%. And the market actually went down like 13.5%. So it went down, I got stopped out, it kept going down for a little bit and then it boomed up. I'm like, dang. <laughs> but that's okay, that's just like one bad day. And then you wake up the next day and you go back and do it again. So that, that's the thing is, is, is persistence, you know? Like you, you, you've got kids, so you know the first time they, they took a couple of steps, they fell over. But you pull them up, they get up again, they take a few more steps, they fall over. And after 20 <laughs> times, 30 times, you actually go, yeah, I can do this now. So <laughs> it's just a matter of, of keep getting back up. Every time you get knocked down, you keep getting back up. And that's when I, when <laughs> I first started, I was literally placing $1 bids. And just go, mm. I'll put a dollar on this and a dollar on this and a dollar on that. And if I lost mm. 10 times in a row, it didn't matter because I was only losing 10 bucks. But I was learning. Mm. And that's what you do. And I did that for a couple of months. And, you know, I'd get to the end of the week and go, woohoo, I made like six and a half dollars this week. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah, very yeah, true, exciting, true. but it was exciting that I was actually learning and going, you know, the kid who learns to walk and can take 10 steps in a row, I mean, that got an Olympic gold medal for that. But mm, they're, yeah. they're, they're 10 times better than what they were last week. So that's right, that's right. Got to keep persisting with it. But um, yeah, if, if, you want to, if you want to get into MBA, there's, I think there's about 6,000 people who are in the group now, so it's quite big. Um, probably mm. more, than, more than half of those are in Australia. So there's guys that you can mm -hmm. actually chat with and have Zoom calls and a few international people as well who are all, all mm. learning from mm -hmm. these Aussie traders. And they've got, they've got different styles. So like Donnie's been trading for 10 years in different markets, cryptocurrency and foreign exchange and that sort of stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, you're learning a skill, which is basically trading candlesticks. So even if Bitcoin disappeared tomorrow and all the cryptocurrencies were blown up or burned down or outlawed or whatever, the skills that you've learned, you can use that to trade gold, oil, US dollars, Japanese yen, you can use it in any market. So it's a mm -hmm. very valuable skill to have and you can and literally do it anywhere in the world. You know, you're sitting on your laptop in the Bahamas and, and placing trades and things like that and making money. So it's pretty, pretty mm -hmm. amazing group, mm -hmm. really. Uh, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... Yeah, no, I want to. Uh, yeah, I, I want to get into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I say, like you can def definitely, like if, if you if you click on the link that's in my video to join MBA, then you'll be tied to me as like my trading buddy. Um, and so when you ask a question, it'll go to me, and if I can't answer it, then it'll go it'll go higher up. Um, but there's a, a lot of different trainers, and they've got different styles. Like you know, Donnie's been in the market for ten years and knows a lot about macroeconomics about the interest rates and the exchange rates of foreign currencies and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Slog, who's one of my mates from 20 years ago, he's just a, a lovable buffhead. Um, you know, he hasn't had any financial training. I don't think he even finished high school. Um, he can lift heavy things, which is really good. And um, mm -hmm. very approachable guy who's, who's learned how to trade and he's, he's quite aggressive in his style. But that's how he lives his life. You know, he likes to lift heavy things and run really fast and, and that kind of stuff. He's a really blokey bloke. And then mm. you know, my, my favourite trainer at the moment is Annie. And, you know, Annie's a, a young girl who's been in the markets only for a couple of years. Um, mm. But she's learned. She's a bit less aggressive than the other guys. Um, she'll take a profit sooner. She'll move her stop losses up, whereas Donnie never moves his stop losses up, even if he's made like 1,500%. Um, she'll move her stop losses up and she won't get as big profits as the other guys, but she'll consistently pull down like 10 grand a week, you know, and that's, that's what she does with her trading. It's just consistent 
it's slow and steady and secure. And the other guys mm. will be bragging going, hey, you know, I made $150,000 last Tuesday. And like, who cares? Like Annie is mm. literally getting 10 grand a week as a minimum paycheck, you know, mm. just with mm. her, with her soul. And sometimes she has a really good week and she might double that. But it's nice mm. to know that you've got a baseline and it's, it's safe. And I'm, I'm a bit older than most of the guys who, uh, who are training me. And, you know, I'm in a different phase of life. So maybe, you know, I just want some more security and I'm happy to learn, learn more off one of the girls than I am off one of the young guys. So. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say, uh, uh, are guys more, like in general, are guys more uh, aggressive than, than women? Opinions. Generally, I mean, you, you've been around the block long enough to know, you know, who's, who's the mm -hmm. ones who are doing skateboard tricks and driving fast cars and, you know, trying to have a competition and how many beers they can drink and that sort of silly nonsense. Like, it's usually the blokes who are doing that. Um, and that's, that's why blokes always die <laughs> younger than women because we, that's we do right, silly that's things right. take bigger risks. Yeah. Uh, women never wanted to fly a rocket ship to the moon or anything like that, but that's okay. That's okay. Mm, uh, yeah. There are there are some aggressive women. There's women race drivers and things like that. I don't want to sound sexist, but in, in general, um, it's usually the blokes who are a bit more aggressive because they've got extra testosterone, and that's okay. Like mm. I can I can still learn from those guys, and you know mm. I'll I'll watch Donnie do like a trade with like fifty sixty thousand dollars on the trade, and I'll just like go, holy crap! There's no way I would ever do that, right? But he's got a lot more money than me, so he can afford to put fifty thousand dollars on a single train. I might put fifty dollars on a train or you know, hundred dollars on a train. Um, <laughs> but he'll do that, and I'll, my stomach will churn. And if it loses, he just goes, "Oh well, just go again." Right? That's that's where he's <laughs> at. Um, <laughs> I freak out, but I can still learn from that and go, "Okay, when he when he turns the knob up to eleven, I might turn the knob up to three or four. I can still learn from his style, but I don't have to copy exactly what he does. You know, mm, mm, there's, mm. there's probably certain things that you do that I wouldn't do. You know, mm. you, you might be able to bench press 150 kilos. I'll, I'll bench press about 20 kilos. Um, mm. But if I, I can follow your technique, I can do it safely, you know, without hurting myself. Mm. And so I don't, I don't lift as heavy mm. weights as you do. I don't place as big trades as what some of these guys do. But if I can, mm. I can do what they do in the same kind of manner and do it safely mm. and learn how to do it, then that's a good thing. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's good, it's good. What, what else good do you stuff. want to learn, mate? This is, this is great. We've been chatting along, just the two of us, because we've got um, one who's had a death in the family. We've got a couple who are working tonight and a couple who are scared off by the rain in Brisbane. But we've only got five minutes left of the call, so the floor's yours. Floor is mine. Uh, no pressure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so when you're going to uh, hold, uh, you, you're going to have a look at a coin, what do you, what do you look at primarily? Yep. Um, there is the, the four-step coin protocol that we go through, um, which is covered on the Krillionaire blog. I think the, it was originally published in like January of 2018. Um, yep. but very, very briefly, it's C-O-I-N. So it's easy to remember. It's just coin. But the yep. C is we're looking at the, who's the CEO, who's the CFO, who's the, you know, the, these guys with the C in front of their title. Um, check them out, make sure they're on LinkedIn, make sure they're actually being involved in other projects and they're not just some guys who got drunk in a garage and decided to launch Dogecoin. Um, we're going to find out they're, they're reputable. O is the offering. Like what solution are they bringing to the marketplace? What problems are they actually solving? Because there's a lot of coins on there that, that sound really fancy and look really fancy and say, oh, you know, get into this coin, it's going to go up 10,000%. But if you look at the offering, go, what do they do? What does it actually do? What sort of problems does it actually solve? How does it help people? Now, like I was saying before, I can transfer Bitcoin to Muliani significantly cheaper than going through Western Union or going through the banks. You know, Ethereum enables you to build applications on it and things like that. So have a look at the offering. Um, I is the investors. 
So who else is putting money into it? Is it just like a lot, a lot of idiot college kids or a lot of people who have got money from their grandpa and they don't know what to do with it? Uh, or have they got some serious investors? You know, is Warren Buffett investing? Is buddy, um, Michael Saylor investing? Is Richard Branson investing into it? I mean, it doesn't need to be like those billionaires, but if there's a few smart people investing into it, um, rather than just people with dumb money, then that's also a good thing. So you've got to, you've got to tick all the boxes as you go along. And finally, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the N is for network. So when you have a look at the project and you say, oh, this sounds like a good project, they've got a good CFO team, got a good CEO, got good whatever, um, got a great offering. There's a few investors that I like to look at the investors. What's the network like? So you have a look on their Reddit channel, on their, you know, on their Twitter, on their Facebook, that sort of stuff. Uh, I looked at one the other day and like there was two projects that I was, I was deciding between and they ticked three boxes out of four and one had like 122 followers on Twitter and the other one had 6,000. Like granted, these were brand new sort of to market, but the one that's mm -hmm. managed to get 6,000 followers in a week, I think that's a bigger and better network because ultimately when mm. you buy a coin, the only way you can realise a profit on the coin is to sell it to someone else. And if there's mm, only a mm, hundred mm. people buying, it's going to be very difficult for you to sell it. Whereas if they've got 6,000 sure. people in their first week, then there's 6,000 people I can sell my coin to this week. And obviously over the next mm. few weeks, it's going to grow and grow as they tell their friends and they tell their friends. So mm, you have mm, a look mm. at, you know, there's, there's Reddit, there's Discord, there's Telegram, there's Twitter, Facebook, all of those sort of things. So check out mm. the network. But that, that's basically a four, four step coin protocol. Very quick and very easy. We actually based it on an article I wrote 20 years ago, uh, which is nine oh, ways to wow. choose your own stocks um, for people who want to you know, invest themselves rather than going through a financial planner or a stockbroker. So that was a bit more complicated. Mm. Obviously, there was nine, nine steps in it, but you've got to do some research into the company and that sort of stuff. But this is very, very basic for coin projects. And we, we've used that coin process on all the coins we chose for Boston Coin. And, mm. you know... In 2017, 2018, 92% of the coins that came onto the market were either scams or went bankrupt. So you had a 92% yeah, chance of yeah. losing your money. Yeah, um, I remember that. That was yeah, terrible. Was shocking. <laughs> and we, we managed to get through that because we deployed these four rules. We managed to get through it. Obviously, coins went down. Like Bitcoin went from 20,000 down to 3,000, but it didn't disappear. And so none of our coins, we were holding like 40 or 50 coins at the time. None of them disappeared. And most of them have actually bounced back and been in front of where they were before. So it's a simple mm, process, mm, but it works. Mm, mm. Oh, I like it. Yeah, no, very good. Very good. Yeah, very it's, good. It's, all, it's all written down on the Krillionaire blog. So if you go in there, mm. I, I, was, I was looking at it earlier today because someone was asking me about it. I think, I think it's January 2018 or it might be April 2018. Yeah. Um, it's on the Krillionaire blog. You'll be able to find that there. Muliani might yeah. even find it and send you the link, mate, if you're lucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, good. she's good like that. All right. So, good to know, good to know. And for anybody who's, who's watching later, we'll, we'll post the link in the, in the YouTube comments and things. So, <laughs> all good. Rightio. So, mate, it's 7.30. We've answered all yep. your questions. You'll be right for the next week. I will. I yep. will. Write, uh, write down some and, more questions. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll um, I'll see you I'll see you next week then. Yep, fantastic. Right? Shoot, shoot me an email yeah. in the meantime. If you got any other questions? Yeah, man. All good. No worries. Cheers, mate. Have a good night. All good. Yeah. Bye. I'll go to. Bye.